Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I want to show you in Django 1.9 the easiest way to be able to take a query set. And a query set is data that uh, Django gets from your database and turns it into a Django object, uh, which is really just an iterable list of objects. And um, it is specific, uh, like I said, to your data. So in this particular case, I have a product app and then I have a class named product. And it's a very simple model, it just simply has a name and a description. So in my views, I have a query set where I say product.objects.all, so it's going to go ahead and return a, uh, like I said, a list of uh, query set objects. All right, so the what we need to do, Django with 1.9 and probably previous versions, I think going all the way back to like 1.7 or so, they have in the Django.core import serializers and the serializers actually serialize a Django query set from like XML uh, or it can, it can query it, it um, serialize it into XML and really serialize all that means is it says hey take this you know Python Django query set database object which is its own type and turn it into a, a valid XML so your know, name name value um, and that, that's really all it is so you have to kind of know about XML and JSON um, and JSON is the JavaScript object notation. It's a JavaScript equivalent of XML, but it's faster. It's more widely used on the web nowadays. Uh, but ultimately, these are languages so that different systems, different operating systems, uh, different languages across the country or the, the world uh, can communicate with one another using this common uh, exchange, you know, this contract. And that's basically what you can view it as, as a contract. So each uh, each person knows how to read the contract because it's in a certain, uh, it's written in a certain way. So that's all JSON and XML are. Um, so anyway, the Django.core import serializers, and then we want to go ahead and just use uh, from Django.http import HTTP response, which is the plain HTTP um, response object. So uh, similar to any time you hit a server, you're going to get some sort of HTTP response object back instead of um, you know, the the other uh, option when we actually return like a template and all that stuff we don't need to actually return a template so we're just using the bare bones HTTP response so here's the list you have a query set we grab them all and then um, let's go ahead and write query set equals and then we're going to use uh, serializers dot serialize and then the first argument you pass is uh, the, the format you want so I'm going to do JSON but you could do XML whatever sort of format you want so here let's do JSON first and then you need to actually pass it to query set as the second argument and then we're going to return HTTP response the query set and then you want to actually give it a content type so it'll actually send back uh, the right header to the browser and we'll say application forward slash JSON. So we're telling the client that makes this request, hey, we're sending you back JSON. That's what this part does right here. So if I went over and I refresh this here, you can see that it is now returning back this uh, this JSON data. So if I copy this entire response and I put it in something like uh, JS Lint, which can verify my JSON data. So here it is right here, and I click validate. You can see that it's valid JSON. So it actually serialized and did all this stuff for me. And that way, my JavaScript client can then read this uh, very easily using something like Angular or React or something along those lines. Now, say I wanted to do XML, I could just easily say XML here, and then application JSON, just say application XML. Then if I review the page here, you can see now it's in XML format. So you can see the two differences there. XML has a bit more overhead than JSON, and it's not quite as easy to work with for a lot of these, um, these JavaScript clients that exist nowadays, the libraries like uh, React. All right, guys, so that is the easiest way to take uh, JSON data from the database and then turn it into JSON. Now, the idea behind something like this also is that um, single page applications are getting more and more popular so you could have essentially just one page served up with a bunch of different JSON endpoints and um, just have a bunch of JSON data returned back to you at a bunch of different endpoints you know you can pass in data 
and get Jason back. So the bottom line, you can do a lot of stuff with uh, with Jason. And this is a simple way uh, to just go ahead and serialize it yourself without actually having to worry about using a full-fledged like uh, serialization library, like RESTful service library like Django REST framework. I'm not knocking on J Django REST framework. I just think that um, it is quite a bit to, to tackle, especially for a newcomer. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye.